What's up everyone, it's Deltlead and welcome back to How to Build Rockets. What I wanted to cover in this video was aerodynamics for aircraft in simple rockets. It's one of the trickier things to master, but the basic concepts are very simple and easy to explain, and then from there you're going to have to build on your own experience and get better at it yourself, and the only way to do that is through trial, error, and practice. Now there are three things that I think are fundamental to designing good aircraft in simple rockets too. That is, knowing where to place your center of mass and center of lift to develop a stable plane that's still maneuverable, knowing what drag is and how to mitigate it and how to use it to your advantage, and control surfaces. When it's a good idea to have large control surfaces with a lot of control over an aspect of your flight, and where it's good to have smaller control surfaces that have less control over aspects of your flight. So the first and probably the biggest thing that we're going to want to take a look at when designing our aircraft is where our center of mass and center of lift are. Now if you've ever seen a dart or an arrow, you'll probably have noticed that all of the fins are in the very back of the dart or arrow, and all the weight is at the front. Usually the arrowhead is the heaviest part of the arrow, and the feathers or the fletching are the lightest, but also have the most surface area, which creates a lot of drag. Now this is important because with darts and arrows, you want them to be very, very stable. Something that is stable does not want to deviate from its current course. It wants to stay pointing in the same direction. Now, if you were to flip the position of the weight and the fins, if you had an arrow that was heavier in the back and had fins in the front, it would be extremely unstable. It would want to turn and rotate to where the fins are in the back and the weight is in the front again, which is its most stable orientation. So when we're designing aircraft, we want to find a balance between something being stable and unstable. If it's too stable, then we're not going to be able to turn or maneuver at all. And if it's completely unstable, then it's not going to be able to fly in the first place. So, what we want to do is design a craft that has a center of lift that is behind the center of mass, which will make it stable, but is not so far behind the center of mass that our control surfaces will be able to change the direction of the aircraft relatively easily without losing control. So, to look at the center of mass and the center of lift, first thing you're going to do is click the View Options tab and click the red and blue icons. The red icon is the center of mass or center of gravity of your aircraft and the blue icon is the center of lift. Now in this aircraft you see that the blue dot is slightly behind the red dot which means that the aircraft is stable but is not overly stable allowing it to be controlled. That is the ideal separation between those two dots that you want to see in your aircrafts. If we were to take these wings and move them up the fuselage, drag them like this, you'll see that the blue dot is now ahead of the red dot. We have more surface area more drag in front of the center of mass and what's going to happen is it's going to cause the aircraft to want to rotate around and spin out of control. Likewise if we bring our wings even farther back and had them back here towards the rear of the fuselage the center of lift is now so far back that the aircraft would be very very stable but so stable that we couldn't pitch up, pitch down, roll, or in any way adjust the course. It's going to want to fly in a straight line like an arrow. There are some situations where extremely stable aircraft are good. Take this Saturn V for instance. We want it to point straight up and not change its course a whole lot except for slowly rotating and most of that rotation is, be from the, is going to be from the engines. And so we have our center of lift way behind the center of mass here which makes it very aerodynamically stable. We don't want rockets to be deviating off course. If we had a rocket where the center of lift was a lot closer to the center of mass it would be a lot more difficult to control. Now the next thing that we're going to want to take a look at when we're designing aircrafts is our control surfaces. Control surfaces allow us to change the aerodynamic properties of the aircraft and allow us to pitch, yaw, or roll our aircraft in order to fly certain courses or maneuver. Your ailerons, which are usually located at the tips of the wings, are used to control the aircraft's roll. By changing the way the air flows over the tips of the wings, you can create a force pushing up and down on the wings, which in turn rolls the aircraft. The ailerons always operate against each other, so when one aileron goes down, the other one goes up. Now the other control surface, and probably the more important control surface, is our elevators. The elevators are usually located on the horizontal stabilizer, and they pitch up and down together to pitch the aircraft up and down. If the ailerons are flapped up or vertically, then it creates a drag force which pushes the uh, back of the aircraft down, 
and when it pushes the back of the aircraft down, it pushes the front of the aircraft up, and likewise, if the ailerons go down, it pushes the nose down. The last and probably least important in Simple Rockets 2 is the rudder, which is usually located on the vertical stabilizer. The rudder controls the yaw and moves the aircraft side to side the same way that the elevators move the aircraft up and down. Unfortunately, the way aerodynamic physics in Simple Rockets is right now, the yaw axis is a little touchy and it tends to oscillate a lot without actually adjusting your heading all that much. So we're going to ignore it for now and focus on the ailerons and the elevator. Let's start with the elevator. First off, you're going to want to make sure that your control surfaces are large enough to impact the course that the aircraft is on. If they're too small, you'll not be able to effectively control the pitch of your aircraft when you need to, and if they're too big, then you will often induce too much drag or not be able to stably control the aircraft. Oftentimes, when control surfaces are too large, you'll overcompensate and it creates very unstable flight. Next up, let's move on to the ailerons. Now, when you're designing your aileron control surfaces, it's important to take into account what kind of controls you're using on your keyboard or on your uh, tablet. If you're using joysticks, like on a mobile device, or if you have a um, actual joystick or gamepad, then you might want to have larger ailerons, which will allow you to have more control while still being able to fine-tune it with an analog input. If, however, you have a digital input, like a keyboard on a computer, you have either 0% when you're not pressing the key, or 100% when you are pressing the key. And so oftentimes it's smart to have smaller control surfaces with these digital inputs, which allows you to control it a little bit more effectively at the sacrifice of not having as much total input when you need it. And the last thing we're going to want to look at when we're designing aircraft to be as efficient as possible is the drag. Now, drag is influenced by two different factors, the speed of your aircraft and the cross-sectional area of your aircraft. Obviously, the faster you go, the harder you're going to be smacking into air particles, and the more force the drag is going to be imparting onto your craft, slowing you down. That's why aircraft have a top speed, even though they're still applying a constant amount of thrust. Eventually, the amount of thrust that the engines are producing is going to be counteracted by the amount of drag that the air craft is experiencing as it moves through a fluid. The other thing that impacts it is the cross-sectional area, which we can adjust a lot by designing our aircraft to be as slim and sleek as possible. By reducing the cross-sectional area, the aircraft slips through the air and doesn't impact as many particles as often. Wider aircraft will move slower and narrower aircraft will move faster. Having shorter, stubbier wings and a long, sleek body gives you a much more efficient aircraft that's able to slice through the air a lot faster. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe to see more tutorial videos on Simple Rockets 2 and leave a comment below of what you'd like me to cover next. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.